Okay, so this is a spur of the moment video, but I think it might be kind of funny. So this afternoon, I'm going to the YouTube space to help my friend Endu film a video for his Word on the Curb channel, which is absolutely amazing. If you like spoken word and poetry and like kind of little lectures done by anyone from around London, then I highly recommend you go and subscribe. So I said, sure, I'll do a poem for you. And so I whipped out my old poetry blog. For those of you that don't know, I used to write poetry. I started when I was about 16 and I ended about when I was 18. So proper angsty teenage poetry. I'm not gonna lie. I used to think my poetry was the shit. However, <laughs> I was just reading some of it back now and I thought, you know what? I wish there was a way I could capture my reactions and put them online. So look what I'm doing. Gonna make a vid. We're gonna read back my 16 year old poetry blog. Sure, why not? I'll leave a link in the description so you can read along. Oh, this is old school. So we'll start with um with a slightly uh questionable one. It's called Cycle and it is posted on April 12th, 2012. I may have written it before then, but chosen to post it on that date. Men just don't care. This mantra has been drilled into me through a seemingly infinite cycle of introduction, infatuation, and isolation. It's so dramatic. We begin with the promise that we will not behave in the same shameful way that we did last time. What was I doing that was so shameful? We shall obey the rules, plural. Count to three, distance and disinterest, you know the rest. What's count to three? Is that a reference to John Tucker? I have never been much of a pessimist, so perhaps that is what leads me towards the false promises of the second stage. Images of holding hands and listening to melodramatic popular bands. Oh, I like that rhyme. Cascade down my anatomy of stardust as I sleep. Oh, anatomy of stardust. <laughs> Never letting me forget that sense of mothering security I feel when, when we communicate. All of a sudden, I am awake. You haven't made an effort to associate for three days. It must be a phase or a mistake. <laughs> My fragile frame shakes as the reality rises above my immature fantasies. Men just don't care. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I'm all about poetry. I love poetry, but it's so, so, so melodramatic. Ooh, some of this is really nostalgic and it's making me feel weird in my tummy. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, this one's called Bedroom and I wrote this on March 22nd, 2012. I just recalled the posters on your walls about Prime Minister's past with dates and such. And I thought to myself, isn't it cruel how time can leave traces of nostalgia left behind? Anticipation and two shades of blue were all it took to once again remember you. Quite like that last line, that's quite nice, isn't it? <gasps> this is a classic! Uh, this one's called MSN, which was published on November 14th, 2011. And if you are my age, you will remember MSN Messenger, which was uh, kind of the predecessor, it was like an instant messaging service, kind of the predecessor to Facebook Messenger. Um, but you wouldn't communicate throughout the day, you'd communicate in one chunk, it would be a conversation. And when we were younger, I was about 11 when I got it and I had it till I was about 13. And I'd always like use like this weird, like glitchy text to like write my name and then um, put like a lyric I liked as my bio or something or a phrase like, don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> so that that's contextualizing uh, that. But this was written um, maybe four years, three or four years after I would have stopped using MSN Messenger. I only gave you beeswax kisses back then because I thought I loved you. I didn't know love back then. <laughs> Did I know love then? I don't know. I couldn't comprehend in our half-hearted procrastination of a conversation, what a rhyme, <laughs> just how devastating the, effect, the effects of a text could be or how misleading the sensation I felt when you gave me attention. I hope that you had fun. <laughs> so bitter, Lucy, who was this written about? Oh God, rhyming procrastination and conversation. <laughs> this one, I love this poem. I wrote this about um, a boy I was dating when I was 18. And uh, I think he was the first person I like properly kind of like fell for a bit. Um, anyway, right, I'll read it to you. Our timer is set. The romance was doomed from the morning you held my hand back in June, claiming that soon you would like me more than I would like you. The truth is more translucent than the image you painted through the light of the dawn, 
foggier at five when I realized that despite your aging claims, I was becoming attached to the boy who refused to give me cold sore kisses despite our intimate arrangement on his parents' sinking sofa. I am trying to do this train wreck justice, but I anticipate the collision, the end of the chemistry, 400 miles from my insulting remarks encased in your bedsheets. Forever preserved are those moments, which melt my spine and reshape it to fit your form. This is not the day that romance will be victorious. Oh, I like that. I've always liked that though. It, it means something, I think that's why. A lot of these I read back and I don't even know who they were about. Whereas that one, I, I know, that was the one poem. Oh, I like this one as well. This one's got some good bits and some bad bits. It's called Shell um, and it was about a boy. They're all about boys. Can you tell they're all about boys? This was published on June 14th, 2013. Today, I am a shell. Yesterday's figure got lost in the absences and now I am dirty, disfigured, swimming through the mist to give you one final prolonged stare <laughs> before you vanish in the distance. I like your smell, how it lingers on your shirts. Detergent never smelled so sweet before it made me think of you. We are not lovers, just open pages. We break out of the jelly mold, shaking with every step. Retreat to your fortress, stroke my spinal cord, and pretend to play a harmony. Baby, we're not going anywhere this morning. I like that one. I like the, the bit which is like, stroke my spinal cord and pretend to play a harmony. I think that's kind of cute. And the we are not lovers. Just open pages. <laughs> oh, this one's cute. Hours spent pretending, covering the creases. They won't recall the sto- Oh, no, I can't read that. Okay, can't read that one. No, 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 that's identifiable. Ah, uh, I've got this one called Dear 13 Year Old Lucy, and I think that's still online somewhere. I think I published it and put it on YouTube. So, if you wanna go hear a letter to my 13 year old self, check somewhere up here and I'll, I'll give it a link even if it's unlisted. Oh, I wrote about my first kiss. Okay, I'll give you like a little snippet. Dear 13 year old Lucy, a week from today you will have your first kiss. He's called Dylan Swift and he knows about important things such as small shoe sizes and softcore porn. Right, so this is like kind of the end of the poem. And finally, a warning. Jordan's friends accelerated your maturity to the point where you can buy cigarettes in a couple of months. I know right now you're sensible, but in a year you'll get so drunk that your sister ends up clearing vomit off a family friend's sofa. You will feel terrible, but don't waste those Friday nights. So far, they're the best adrenaline rush of your life. Foles filling up your iPod as you stroll towards the swarm of unripe fruit you hardly know for another evening of social dilemmas. Oh, that's so interesting. The scarring on your face will last past the acne-ridden years, and you've yet to experience the biggest regret that upsets everything until you reach 16. But for now, you still have a slender silhouette, and you've yet to collect shadows you would rather forget. We must celebrate together what a wonderful human you have the potential to become. We're not quite there yet. Just remember that the best thing you can do is refuse to hide. Stop being a snail, Lucy. Yours faithfully, your 17 year old self. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute, that's so nice. Oh God. Oh, there are so many about this one boy that I that just didn't deserve them. You know when you read something back, you're like, that person did not deserve all those words I gave them. That person didn't deserve my thoughts or my time or my, or my writing. Yeah, that was, that was some of these. Okay, so we've had a crisis. My microphone died midway through that. Didn't know this microphone could die, but hey. Let me know your favorite line of all of those poems. Let me know if you write poetry now. I wrote something kind of recently, but other than that, I haven't written it in so long. So I kind of miss it. I write lyrics now. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.